The first at six, two teens charged in a deadly 2022 shooting are back behind bars after cutting off their ankle monitors. 17 year old Isaac Gonzalez and an unnamed 15 year old both arrested last October in a deadly drive by shooting that happened on Bald Mountain. You may remember it. Bear County investigators say the pair fired more than 100 rounds into a home that night, leaving the woman who lived there dead and a different woman staying there injured. The teens targeted the wrong home. They were arrested shortly after given ankle monitors. Both of them recently cut those monitors off and had been on the run ever since. That 15 year old was rearrested just a few days ago. Gonzalez taken into custody earlier today. Each of them are facing murder charges. It would change the way Texas deals with immigrants. A new bill when signed by the governor would mark a major milestone in the ongoing debate over immigration policy. As Jonathan Cotto reports, it is sending shockwaves through the state. Y'all don't understand the that y'all do hurts our community. It hurts us personally, bro. Last week, the Texas House voted on a trio of bills that has sparked controversy and condemnation from various migrant advocacy groups. Today, La Unión del Pueblo Entero argues these bills could have serious implications for migrant communities and individuals seeking a better life in the U.S. We're disappointed because, one, it adds to an environment that targets immigrants, it creates more anti-immigrant rhetoric, and it approaches immigration from a place that, you know, says that we should criminalize people instead of trying to help people. Senate Bill 4 increases the minimum sentence from two to 10 years in prison for those found guilty of smuggling migrants, while House Bill 4 would allow police to apprehend, arrest, or send back migrants who crossed into Texas illegally. House Bill 6 funds the construction of more of the border wall. We already see very bad effects of over-policing on the border and what that causes for immigrant families. And we're just worried that with the passage of SB4, that this may give more leeway for law enforcement to be stricter with families, to ask for more documentation when they're simply on their way to work, right, or on their way to drop off kids in school. While critics say they worry about the potential impact on migrant communities, supporters argue these bills are necessary for security. We reached out to one of SB4 sponsors, State Representative Ryan Guillen from Rio Grande City for a response on the legislation. We have yet to receive a reply. The Senate has yet to act on House Bill 4. While House Bill 6 was sent to the Finance Committee, Senate Bill 4 is just waiting the governor's signature. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And speaking of the governor tonight, Governor Greg Abbott announcing that he has reached an agreement with House leaders on school vouchers. But other state lawmakers are reluctant that even that agreement will pass. The potential breakthrough comes after months of unsuccessful negotiations. According to the Texas Tribune, under the governor's deal, parents would get around $10,400 per student to pay for private education. That's more than both the state House and Senate versions of the bill. Right now, there are still two dozen Republican House members who oppose school vouchers. The special session ends on November 7th. To take a live look outside right now, 60 degrees warmed up nicely. It's beautiful blue skies out there, Sarah. Absolutely, but those clear skies is what's going to allow for temperatures to quickly fall tonight. Some areas seeing their first freeze of the season. The high temperature today, 61 degrees. Absolutely beautiful. A lot of kids heading out to trick or treat. If you're planning on going a little later tonight, know that it's going to get chilly. Temperatures falling into the upper 40s by 8 p.m. Winds will be calming and skies are clear. So that leads us to our first weather headline for the forecast. Uh, Hill Country first freeze tomorrow morning. That includes some neighborhoods in northern Bear County. So I'll have a look at which neighborhoods will be uh, seeing that first freeze early tomorrow morning. You'll enjoy the cooler weather until Friday. That's when temperatures are going to be rebounding and by the weekend we'll be back into the 80s. So a close up view of which neighborhoods will be looking at that freeze early tomorrow morning coming up. Thank you, Sarah. Let's check out traffic right now. This is US 90 at I 35 and you can see some type of accident off to the left hand there of your screen. You can see the access road also very busy. At least two lanes are closed right now. Not exactly sure what happened. Could be just a fender bender, but we're trying to get more information for you. Again, this is Highway 90 at I-35. A man charged with the murder of a five-year-old boy now has a trial date. Daniel Garcia charged in the death of Dominic Aguilar Acevedo. 
Dominic in 2021 appeared to have been killed here in San Antonio. His body, though, was left in a Colorado ravine. His mother, Nicole Aguilar, has also been charged in this case, but with injury to a child. Daniel Garcia in court today found out a jury would be picked for his trial on May 3rd. During his hearing, other issues in the case also discussed, including information regarding whether the district attorney told the first defense attorney on the case that he would reduce the murder charge. There was a meeting face to face, uh, not necessarily only about this case, but that this subject came up regarding the indictment and the heading of the offense code. The judge in the case did order all parties to return on November 30th to further clear up the matter as well as some evidence issues. The co-defendant in this case, Nicole Aguilar, expected to go to trial first in February. Both of them are facing up to life in prison if they are found guilty. Just hours before an apartment complex went up in flames, firefighters were there after they got a call about an odor of smoke. The San Antonio Fire Department originally went to the Chisholm Trace Apartments on Hebner Road on the northwest side about midnight. The woman who called the fire department says she thought something was burning inside her third floor apartment. Firefighters looked around and they shut off an electrical breaker that powered a fan in her bathroom. A few hours later, she woke up to thick smoke and her daughter's panicked voice. Yelling, mom, mom, get up, get out. We need to get out. The house is on fire. My little Lisa Espinoza, her family and their neighbors were able to make it out unharmed. The American Red Cross showed up to help those families who lost their home. A fight ends up with a man getting shot. Now San Antonio police are looking for the suspected shooter. It happened about 10 last night on Old Pearsall Road near Miller's Park Pond. That's on the southwest side. SAPD says the victim met a group of men when a fight broke out. The man was shot in the chest and drove to a nearby gas station to get help. The victim taken to a nearby hospital. At last check, he was in critical condition. This is an ongoing investigation. And tonight, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help in finding the people responsible for the murder of two 23-year-olds. These are the victims, those 23-year-olds, Jeremy Allen and Aaron Espinosa. According to SAPD, the two men were killed on July 21st at the Alon at Castle Hills Apartments on Lock Hill, Selma. Their bodies were found four days later on Merriman Road. If you have any information on what led up to their murder, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. So is it working? The City of San Antonio's workforce training program, Ready to Work, is in its second year. City sales tax dollars pay for San Antonians to get degrees or certifications that will help them get high quality jobs in in-demand fields. City staff presented an update on that program today. Garrett Berger tells us how it's doing. For Brandy Cisneros, a bachelor's degree in business management wasn't the guarantee of success she had hoped. Because growing up, I've always been told, go to college, get a job, and everything's going to be okay. Um, but that wasn't the case. A brief stint in education didn't suit her. And when the now 24-year-old went looking for new work, she had a hard time finding a job that would allow her to move out of home and live on her own. But with the pay offers I was getting, I, I'm not able to do that. Hoping to beef up her earning potential, she found Ready to Work and enrolled in a human resource management certification program. One of nearly 5,000 San Antonians who've signed up for some type of education or job training through Ready to Work so far. After a slow start in the first year, city staff has set their sights on lower yearly targets, though not, they say, on the end goals. 39,000 applicants interviewed, 28,000 enrolled in training, 15,600 placed in jobs. Those, are, the goals, those goals will not change. That's still what our targets are for the program. And while the goal is to place 80% of program grads in a high quality job within six months, the city's currently reporting a rate of about 62%. At least one councilwoman questioning why hundreds of grads haven't yet found jobs. I think we need that presentation to see how we need to make adjustments, what we need to do, um, as we move on. A city spokesman told KSAT the city's partners, from employers to case managers, are working diligently to improve participant outcomes because it's the promise of good jobs at the end that keep people coming in. So I do hope that with this certification, it is able to land me a job um, where I can make a decent pay and a livable wage. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. They served our country bravely, but many came away with blood cancers. One third of those cancer patients often end up with dental complications. Courtney Friedman explains thanks to a new grant, UT Health San Antonio able to provide dental care to those veterans for free. 
Take a quick look to see if this fits on you, okay? Dr. Annette Soto is leading a UT Health San Antonio dental program, giving free care to veterans who have blood cancers, all thanks to a $100,000 grant from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. We need to be sensitive with either surgical interventions or um, chemotherapy that they might be undergoing. Dr. Soto says many veterans came into contact with hazardous materials overseas that may have led to those blood cancers. And once they start chemo or radiation, current dental issues can get exacerbated. It could be the dental structure that has been compromised for years of wear. It could be further fracture where the tooth is not restorable, but it could be also gum related problems. A lot of people don't think about the effect that psychological conditions can have on your teeth. PTSD, anxiety and depression can cause clenching or grinding and inevitably lead to tooth loss. Stick your tongue out for me, saque la lengua. Since the grant came in, Dr. Soto has received four patients. She's already begun dental work on two and will start on the others when they finish chemotherapy. Todo bien. Dr. Soto knows her and her team are not just fixing teeth, they're restoring an entire quality of life for each patient. They want to have a productive, happy life where they can socialize and be proud of their smile, where they can easily talk to other people, enjoy their food. A life worthy of their service to our nation. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Veterans in that program can receive dental care before and after cancer treatments. If you're interested in signing up or learning more, we have a link on KSAT.com. You can find this story. Now in the last few days of early voting for the November 7th elections, voters will see 14 propositions on the ballot that will either create or change state funding. There are also local races to decide on, depending on your precinct. To see a full list of voting locations in a sample ballot, just scan this QR code on your screen. Early voting ends November 3rd. By the way, later this week here on the News at 6 Doc Talk, it's our new series featuring your medical questions on any subject. Scan this QR code to let us know what questions you want answered by local doctors. We'll ask them. Case at 12's Doc Talk airs Thursdays at 6:30. They're still ahead on the news at six, a Halloween surprise. See how the San Antonio Police Department is continuing an annual Halloween tradition for children in the hospital. They literally drop by. It's next. They're creating a safe space for kids who have seen violence near their homes. That's the goal behind a local pastor and a group of volunteers. Tonight on the Night Beat, we're going to take you inside that safe space and show you how they hope to do more than just provide a place to hang out. That's on the Night Beat at 10. A local Halloween tradition continued this morning as the San Antonio Police Department repelled from the roof of the Baptist Children's Hospital. I love this story every year. Tiffany Huerta shares the joy it brought patients and made it a special Halloween. <laughs> patients at Baptist Children's Hospital got a superhero surprise this morning. We saw Hulk, who we love. Spider-Man was great because he came upside down. Members of the San Antonio Police Department SWAT team and San Antonio Fire Department team members dressed as superheroes and rappelled down the hospital building. <gasps> Kids and families watched in awe, including Elise Reynolds and her daughter, who's been in the hospital for a few days. She was a little afraid she was gonna miss out on trick-or-treating today. Elise was thrilled the children were able to get in the Halloween spirit and celebrate. A Black Panther. Black Panther, he was your favorite. The superhero drop event honors Julian Andrade, a former pediatric patient and son of a San Antonio police officer the five-year-old lost his battle with cancer in the spring of 2015. We recognize their loss with a legacy of enjoyment of the kids and thoughtfulness and, and consideration for their recovery. And so it's an important relationship and an important legacy that we honor every year at this time. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. KSAT and our community partners want to remind you, roll up your sleeves, get your flu shot. There's one more chance for you to get a free vaccine. Courtesy of Bear County and University Health, it's this Saturday, November 4th from 8 till noon. If you want to register, just head to ksatcommunity.com. All right, a lot of people worried about the weather tonight. Is it going to rain? Will it be too cold? 
some some people the trick or treating's already on underway. Absolutely, Sarah. yeah. But the later you wait, the colder it's going to be. Steve, temperatures will be falling into the 40s here shortly. And a big thing I want to focus on for early tomorrow morning is that if you live in the hill country, you will likely see your first freeze of the season early tomorrow morning. And here's the reason why. Take a look at your screen. This is a look at the clouds today. You know, we started off cloudy, but very quickly skies cleared. Now those clouds last night acted as a blanket and kept temperatures from falling too much. But without those clouds around, there's going to be nothing to keep us warm in the overnight hours. And so because of that and the dry air in place, temperatures will plummet. Here's a look at the humidity right now. I call this chapstick weather. Whenever dew points are below 30 degrees, dew points are in the 20s right now. That's that dry desert air. Think about the desert. It gets cold in the evenings and warm in the afternoons and it's going to be cold tomorrow morning. Here's a look at tomorrow morning's lows in San Antonio. It's still going to be above freezing 36 degrees. So if you live in San Antonio, you don't have to worry about bringing your plants in, covering uh, up your plants. That's only a worry for those that live north of San Antonio into the hill country. Areas like Kerrville, Comfort, Bandera, Los Maples, Utopia, uh, Bernie. Now that freezing line will dip into northern Bear County. So some neighborhoods as far south as perhaps Leon Springs, Timberwood Park there along 281 will briefly touch freezing. If you do live north of that freezing line, so again areas like Pipe Creek, Medina Lake, Spring Branch, Make sure to cover up your plants or bring in the sensitive vegetation. Of course, a friendly reminder, everyone should remember their pets tonight as it is going to be a cold uh, evening and a cold morning tomorrow. But with the dry air in place, we cool down quickly and we warm up quickly. So tomorrow, even though we'll briefly be in the 30s right around 7, 8 o'clock with abundant sunshine, we're quickly going to warm into the 40s by 10. So you'll still need that jacket throughout the morning. But around noon, it's going to be 54 degrees and sunny outside. And then in the afternoon, 63 for the high temperature tomorrow, still well below average but uh, cool and you can see that we're dealing with this warming trend. The average high this time of year is 77. We're going to be at 63 in San Antonio, 64 in Del Rio, 62 in Pleasanton, Beeville. You'll be at 64. It's going to be 59 though in Gonzales, a little bit closer around the Alamo City, upper 50s in the Hill Country, Bernie 59 degrees, 64 in Bandera, 60 in Seguin and 62 in Poteet. So You'll still want the sweaters though until Friday because we're still going to have a few cold mornings until Friday. In fact, again, tomorrow morning 36, th Thursday morning 39. Our morning lows will be back though in the 50s by Friday and you won't need the jackets over the weekend. Again, that's the last headline here. By the weekend, we're going to be in the 80s. So let's put it all together for you in the forecast. Hill Country light freeze tomorrow morning, but sunny in 63. 39 Thursday morning, 67 on Thursday, 70s Friday, 80s over the weekend. No real rain in the forecast over the next seven days, unfortunately. And even though San Antonio will likely stay above freezing, I do have a look at when San Antonio typically sees its first freeze coming up in just a few minutes. Tis the season for weather whiplash here, up and down. Absolutely, not knowing what to wear. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Sarah. All right, so the Rangers with a huge win last night, but it came at a cost. Mary Rominger joins us now. Mary, they're going to be out one of their big bats tonight. One of their big bats and for the later stretch of the series, one of their top pitchers. So things are looking a little grim right now and we'll have the details coming up as game four of the World Series gets underway from Chase Field tonight. So all the details as the Rangers continue their championship aspirations without their ALCS MVP. Plus, the one and two Spurs open up back to back games against the two and one Suns tonight. The team hopeful for a less spooky outcome than their last game. ALCS MVP Adolis Garcia is out of the lineup tonight when the Texas Rangers take on Arizona in game four of the World Series. Texas manager Bruce Bochy said Garcia has a moderate strain of his left oblique after getting hurt in last night's game three. The slugger is hitting a team high 
323 this postseason with eight homers and a major league record 22 RBI. Garcia could be out for the rest of the World Series along with pitcher Max Scherzer who has a muscle spasm in the right side of his back. And within an hour of the game getting underway, the Rangers remove Garcia and Scherzer from the World Series roster. Ezekiel Duran and Brock Burke have been added. Now game four is looking to be a bullpen game for both lefties, excuse me, for both teams as lefty Andrew Heaney will start for the Rangers and the D-backs will counter with left-hander Joe Mantiply. First pitch is at 7.03 and of course Texas leads the series 2-1. The San Antonio Spurs are in Phoenix tonight for the first of two back-to-back -back games against the Suns. In recent years, the Suns have had the Spurs number, winning the last nine matchups against San Antonio, but three of the last six have been decided by five points or less. The first step for the Spurs tonight against Phoenix, who will be without Devin Booker or Bradley Beal, will be limiting turnovers after they compiled 25 in Sunday's loss to the Clippers. I mean, I would say it feels like a little bit of a playoff game, you know, being being able to play like two games in a row. You know, I think uh, it's going to be a good challenge for us. Uh, you know, we're a very young and talented team, but uh, I think that we can compete in this league with everybody. We just have to, you know, be ready physically and mentally, and I think that we can do it. You know, we're still learning, you know, how to play with one another and what to do in different spots. So, I mean, I guess we'll see just how it kind of plays out and how everyone slides into the roles. Um, we're trying to just, you know, play the same kind of, trying to do what we do best and let the rest take care of itself. Turning the conversation over now to college football. UTSA went a perfect 4-0 in the month of October. But the grueling stretch of November is where you can gain real credibility. This Saturday, the 5-3 and three Roadrunners will face 3-5 and five North Texas. Now, historically, UTSA has suffered some surprising and lopsided losses when playing in Denton. It wasn't a good performance at all, and uh, we've been reminded of that thoroughly. Uh, I've been reminded of that thoroughly. I just never really left my mind, so, you know, we, we're going up there with a chip on our shoulder to... Uh, trying to erase that bad taste in our mouths. I don't even know why we lost so many times there, um, but Coach Redick is bringing that up to us and, uh, you know, just try to go out there, you know, this week and not come back with that feeling. The Mean Green hosts kickoff at 2 p.m. this Saturday, and you can watch that one on ESPN+. Plus. Always a good game between North Texas and UTSA. Yeah, how about that? I know. Who would have thought? <laughs> Thanks, Mary. We'll be right back. We're going to talk about a heartfelt tribute at Hemisphere after the break.